Welcome to all who are in the sanctuary with us today. What the world truly needs is love, not just today, but every day. Let us be that love. Let us send this love out into the world. Please join me in an affirmative prayer. So take a deep breath and just center yourselves in this moment. Right here and now, we recognize that there is one mind. This mind is God. This mind is our mind now. And this mind is that perfect and perfecting presence. This mind is love in action. So we attune to this mind now and allow ourselves to be vehicles through which this love radiates, through which this love emanates, through which this love touches and blesses and heals everyone in our atmosphere and beyond. I know for this morning's service, it is a perfectly lovely idea that is spoken from within the heart of love to touch every heart in loving and lovely ways. So we give thanks for this morning's service. 
and we are fully present now to the presence of love and allow it to fill our minds, fill our beings, fill our hearts, to spill over into everything, every idea, every word spoken, every action taken. This is the truth about this morning and every morning. We give thanks that this is so now, and so it is. Our inspirational reading this morning is taken from The Joyous Living Journal by Petro Veldez and Christian Sorensen. And it reads, Love as Spiritual Practice. There are so many ways to understand and define love Many of these definitions revolve around romantic love, but this just isn't enough. Love is actually a spiritual principle that is at the heart of life itself. Love is the impulsion of life to express and become more through everyone and all of creation. Therefore, everything is already in love and worthy of love. The spiritual practice of love is having a positive regard for another. Love is a decision to act and behave toward another in a positive and consistent way. Love is a desire to know another as much as you know yourself. Love is the ability to care deeply and fully. Love is vulnerable, accepting, yet strong. Love is not afraid to tell the truth. Love is the most powerful force in the world. I have a question for you. How do you live the spiritual practice of love in your life? Think about that today as we close out the love month of February. And now we have our praise song, which is in your program and on your screen for those watching online. Life is for living. Please stand. have the blessing of our children, which will follow the lighting of the candle. We'll 
I light this candle on behalf of all the youth of the world. Let us behold the Christ in them. Now let us have the prayer of our center. It's in your program on a flyer and on the screen. We love you, we appreciate you, we salute the Christ in you. We see you as shining lights unto your world. God is blessing you now, and so it is. And now for the prayer of our center. The Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. Amen. And we have a little special task to do this morning. So I would like to invite Kaylee and Reverend John to the podium. And Miss Carmen Clark, would you please come up here? <laughs> Mrs. Clark, <Really>? Auntie Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Carmen has been facilitating our young adult workshops for the better part of 10 years. So many of our young adults have been to her classes, and as a result, we are regular contributors of affirmations to the temple's start of the day. Database, we can all write affirmative prayers. Mm. We are not saying goodbye, but see you later, as she takes a well-deserved rest from the teaching roster. Here's an acronym which represents how we see her. C, she is consistent mm -hmm. with what she says. She means she won't change unless you give a good reason. <laughs> and even then. A, agile. Agile and fit, she has to be to keep up with us. <laughs> R, resourceful. If there is any way to execute something, ask her. She will have ideas. M, magnanimous. Generosity is part of who she is. E, expressive. Let us make this pellucidly clear. Get my meaning? <laughs> N, natural. Our Auntie Carmen is the real deal. In fact, she's a natural teacher. We love our Aunt Carmen. She will always have our best wishes for love, health, and peace. God loves Aunt Carmen, and so do we. But don't go yet. Morning, family. I think to be a teacher is perhaps the most frustrating and yet the most rewarding job there could possibly be. And to be a Sunday school teacher is even more so. I guess because regular teachers that teach in the classroom on a Monday to Friday basis have the support of the parents to some extent or to a large extent. Parents will at least 
make the gesture of looking over the homework, even if you're like me, you don't understand one figure of the maths, and everything is different to when we were learning. But parents take an interest in the academics. Far too few parents take an interest, and an active interest, in the spiritual education of their children. And so as we honor Reverend Carmen this morning for years of Reverend Carmen, yeah. maybe coming, coming events cast their shadow as we, as we honor her, yes. I'm making a special appeal from her heart through my mouth to your ears. Support your children, bring them to Sunday school, Funday school, activities that we're offering here. It's their, their spiritual education is as important, if not more so, than all of the other general knowledge that they're gaining in life. So Auntie Carmen, I don't, don't think I can add anything more to what the children have said in your citation. And I guess I just want to say to you that our prayer for you is a simple one. It is, God bless you. So this poem is for you. Listen with your heart. Yes, please, come to this point, to this. I can't, I'm coming here and don't say anything. I'm getting very emotional because she has been a strength to me, Chris Lieber. I would, into the, into the I, I would, I would call her when we are having parties for Christina, I don't attend. I say, Carmen, please come. She would take Christina to our house and have her in the bed, and they would talk because he's teenage. And she was always there for her. So there's no way I could let him go, and I don't say it publicly how much you have been a strength to me. I don't particularly like his style all the while, but I just leave it. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, so, the prayer is, God bless you. God bless you, Carmen Victoria Clark. Words are powerful things we speak and think not what we're saying. But in this phrase forever rings the higher consciousness of praying. This trinity of blessing words holds all our wishes, oldest, newest. The fairest deeds that you have wrought, our noblest thoughts, and the truest. Tis more than wishing joy and wealth that kindly fortune will caress you, that you might have success and health. God bless you. God bless you, Carmen Victoria Clark. Why it means so much, we almost whisper as we say it. We dream that unseen fingers touch our hands in answer as we prayed. May all it means to all mankind in all its wondrousness possess you. In love, in sun, in shade, in shine, come in Victoria Clark. God bless you. From all of us, With my joy on behalf of the Temple of Light, our Board of Trustees, our ministers, our practitioners, the youth, who are such an important part of our ministry, and the entire Temple of Light family internationally and here in Jamaica. Youth Service Award presented to Carmen Victoria Clark in recognition of your outstanding contribution to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, dated 2022, with our love. Good Lord, I feel like I died. <laughs> Thank you very much. First thing is, and good morning, everybody. I did not expect this. And so I feel really frazzled, which is very unlike me. <laughs> and I really appreciate this. I need everybody to know this. I have not gone anywhere for the children. I'm always here. They are very, very special to my heart. 
and I'm always here for them. Any parent in this church at any time, any teen, any young adult, anybody can always call me. And you should know that I'm doing the next youth service. I'm just thinking it's time for somebody else to take, the mantle. to the take this over. These children are really open and receptive and willing to learn. You just have to understand their space and treat them with respect, be firm, but respectful of them. And remember these parents and family and friends. Sunday school provides future members of this temple. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. It's very nice. How appropriate to have this kind of presentation during Love Month. And, and I want to tell you that my me, me, me eye them my water now, so me might not see too good. <laughs> We're now going to do the mission song, which speaks so purely to all that Carmen has contributed to this temple and to the youth. Stevie for revving it up a bit. <laughs> now it's time for our announcements. What meditation? It says announcements first. <laughs> welcome to our first time visitors. If there are any in the sanctuary, I invite you to please stand so we can welcome you properly. Anyone online, please identify yourself online so that we can welcome you and wish you a perfect day today. Thank you all for being here on this Our Practitioner Sunday for February. And whether you're in the sanctuary or online, know that we welcome you to our hearts and to our beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. Please come again and again to share your consciousness with us. We continue to live stream every Sunday at 9 a.m. and on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. for our Spiritual Mind Healing Service. The recordings are also available later on YouTube. We're back to face-to-face -to -face for our discovery sessions. That's some good news, yes? So join us today at 10.30 a.m. when Reverend John Scott and Reverend Michael Record we lead a discussion on the ultimate goal of life. Stick around for that. Now, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m., as many of you know, Reverend John 
holds quiet moments in the garden. This is at 6 a.m. our time. This is a refreshing and insightful early morning start to your day. If you haven't experienced it yet, do make the effort. It's not that early. <laughs> on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. on Facebook and Zoom platforms, we have our spiritual enrichment service. And this is about 45 minutes of spiritual insights and a conversation. It's less formal than our Sunday service, but every bit as informative and important. This week, our presenter is Reverend Michael Record. Now, the link for that is sent out from our mailing list. So if you're not on the mailing list, get on the mailing list. Coming up next, no, not next, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. The theme is the day of prayer. And this will be a day signed by God. You're invited to send your prayer requests in advance, or there's a box basket in the entrance where you can write out your prayer requests that will be dealt with on Ash Wednesday. It's a day of prayer that goes throughout the day. This begins at 6 a.m. with Reverend John's Quiet Moments in the Garden and continues through to 3 p.m. We hope you'll spend the entire day with us, and if you plan to do that, please bring your water and snacks. On Thursday evenings at 6, we continue to have prayer power, and this comes to you also via Zoom. The link is sent out on Thursday mornings from our mailing list. So you know the drill. If you're not on the mailing list, you know what to do. By now, registered members should have received a letter inviting them to volunteer for service on a ministerial selection committee. This committee will have the responsibility of advertising the vacancy for pastor upon Reverend John's retirement. If you are moved to serve in this way, please respond by March 14th. So put that in your calendar. Classes begin again Tuesdays, beginning March the 8th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Reverend Michael will be facilitating Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. On Thursdays, morning at 10 a.m., beginning March the 10th. March the 10th at 11. <laughs> Reverend John Scott has a face-to-face -face class titled spiritual principles and practices and also on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. beginning also on March the 10th Reverend Sonia and Reverend Anne will lead a zoom class titled leave your nets not leave your nests leave your nets contribution for the classes for all the classes is 1200 Jamaican dollars or 10 US dollars for registered members and 1600 Jamaican or 12 US dollars for other, other persons wishing to take the classes. We continue to respond to all prayer requests. A practitioner is available to pray with you immediately following our service every Sunday. On duty this Sunday is practitioner Jennifer Livingston. The number to call is 876-289-0907. If you'd like to speak with a minister, call 876-289-0907 from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to midnight. We're here for you. Do take advantage of that. And to close us out, to finally <laughs> to finally and financially support our ministry, kindly visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org, which has all our banking details. You know, this ministry is so important, especially at these times, but all the time. 
but right now we need this more than ever. So I want to thank you for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. This concludes our announcements. Now please join me in singing our first hymn, I Radiate the Love. It's in your program and on the screen. Oh. <laughs> no, no, sorry, Val. <laughs> the format is a little different this morning, so bear with me. <laughs> We're going to go into a series of meditations, four meditations. For those of you who used to, who have been coming for a while, you might re recall that we used to have these on Practitioner Sunday. So we are just bringing this back today. Our first meditation is an affirmative prayer of health. And we'll follow that by singing, God is health, health surrounds me. You can follow. So please join me. This is an affirmative prayer of health. God is health. God is the life that lives in us, that lives through us, that lives as us perfectly, contentedly, and knowingly. Every cell in our physical bodies responds to the health that is our birthright, to the health that is God expressing perfectly through us. So we know and affirm that from the crown of our heads through to the soles of our feet, every tissue, every muscle, every function, every issue recognizes God in the midst, God in its function, God at the circumference, God as its all in all. And for this we truly give thanks as we open ourselves to be this vehicle for perfect expression of God as radiant health. We give thanks for this, and we allow this to be so now as we release these words into that perfect law that has already made this so. And so it is. God is health, that health surrounds me. In that health I safely dwell. Tis above, beneath, within me. Health is mine, and all is well. God is health, pure health. God is health, sweet health. That health is mine, mine, and all is well. And now an affirmative prayer of wealth. There is an abundance that fills this universe, that fills our experience, that fills every expression of life. This is the wealth of God. It is unlimited, it is boundless, it is generous. This wealth speaks through us and into our lives and affairs as a wealth of opportunities, as an overabundance of substance, as the greatness of life allowing itself to generate prospering abundance in everything that we undertake. This is a wealth that is overflowing so that we share the goodness and the bounty of God operating in and through our lives and affairs. We give from a heart that's full. We give from endless resources. And we share this good so that everyone whom we touch in our minds, in our activities, in our atmosphere, is uplifted, is inspired, is recognizing that generous prosperity and abundance 
are our birthright as children of the Most High. God is infinite. And all the good that God has and is, is ours now by right of being. There is no lack. There is only God expressing fully in, through, and as all our affairs. This is the truth about us now. And I give thanks for this knowing and live my life from this truth. God is the all in all. And I am the vehicle for the expression of this all. We give thanks now and release these words into that perfect law that is right now making it so. And so it is. God is wealth that wealth surrounds me. In that wealth I safely dwell. Tis above, beneath, within me. Wealth is mine and all is wealth. God is wealth, pure wealth. God is wealth, sweet wealth. That wealth is mine. Mine and all is well. And now an affirmative prayer of light. Light is that pure intelligence that God is. This intelligence guides our steps unfailingly into pathways of peace, of joy, of ever-givingness, of wealth and health. This is the light that we radiate. This is the light that beams out from this temple of light, center for spiritual living, that touches, that heals, that blesses, that opens our hearts and our minds to that inner knowing that wherever we are, God is. And that light that God is informs our every decision so that we never put a foot wrong. Wherever we are and whatever we think and whatever we do, we are open to the guidance that this light provides. It is that lamp onto our feet as we traverse this pathway of life as we acknowledge and express this light in all our affairs, we give thanks for the knowing that whatever it is we need to know to express at our full potential is right now finding its way to and through us as God, the light of our being, now expresses fully and perfectly, intelligently and continuously through us. I give thanks for this knowing, and I release these words now into that light that knows all and is all. I give thanks that this is no so, and so it is. God is light that light surrounds me. In that light I safely dwell. Tis above, beneath, within me. Light is mine, and all is well. God is light, pure light. God is light, sweet light. That light is mine, mine, and all is well. And our final meditation this morning is an affirmative prayer of love. Love is that cosmic force that harmonizes everything, that brings together and holds together that which belongs together. This love is God in action. We are the activity of God 
as we allow this love to be who and how and what we are, who and how and what we do. This love is compassionate. This love is engaging. This love is complete in its expression. This love totally involves everyone and everything. Love is that perfecting energy that brings everything into perfect alignment. I am speaking my word this morning for every activity. I'm speaking my word particularly for those persons in Europe, in the Ukraine, and in Russia. That love finds its perfect expression through each mind and heart this morning and every morning. Love is the way of our heart. Love is the way of our life. Love is, we are, because God is love. We choose love today. We choose to be that vehicle today. We choose and know that that choice brings God perfectly and spectacularly into our lives, into our interactions, into everything in which we are involved in today. We remember God is love, and we are the way God works. We give thanks now for this knowing. We accept this challenge. We accept it as our dharma, as our perfect mission to be love, to be loving, because we know that God at the center, God at the circumference, is love itself, expressing perfectly, rightly, and completely in us and through us this moment, this day. I give thanks for this knowing, and I release these words now into that perfect law of love that guides us, that sees us, and allows us to be God in expression as love. Thank you, God, that all this is now so, and so it is. God is love that love surrounds us. In that love we safely dwell. Tis above, beneath, within me. Love is mine and all is well. God is love, pure love. God is love, sweet love that love is ours. Ours and all is well. Take a deep breath and allow these affirmative prayers to just sink into your bones. To be real in our expression today. And as we come back to this present moment, we now join our voices to sing, I radiate the love. Yeah. 
I need to breathe through that because I'm feeling teary eyed. Never mind. With that in our hearts, I would like you to help me welcome our presenter for this morning, practitioner, I almost said Reverend, <laughs> Sandra Cooper who is a practitioner par excellence, who lives this teaching, who is herself an expression of love and light and joy. Please help me welcome Sandra Cooper. Thank you, Carol. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Temple of Light, welcome to our hearts, and we also welcome all those of you who are joining us on the World Wide Web. You know, the East Indian mango tree in my backyard is in full bloom. I'm sure many of your mango trees are in bloom as well. Some of them are even bearing. Now, this tree bears pro prolifically, and in a few months I will have mangoes not Oti'iti apples, not guava, not oranges, but big, sweet, juicy East Indian mangoes. Those of you who are in foreign, ah, I just want you to feel and just, you know, the, the juice flowing of those mangoes. You see, decades ago, someone planted a seed, a single East Indian mango seed, in the spot where my mango tree is now. And that was the genesis of the mango tree enjoyed by me, my friends and family, my neighbors, and all and sundry other characters who come up over the fence to <laughs> help themselves. The mango seed and the tree with its blossoms and prolific fruit made me think of the seed of love out of which each one of us was created. Now, when that seed is nurtured by demonstrations of kindness, compassion, empathy, and more love, we're bound to blossom, to thrive and prosper, bearing fruits of success, confidence, joy, and of course, more love. So seeing that this is the last Sunday in the Love Month, my message this morning is titled, Love Blossoms, and you can take the blossoms as either a verb or a noun. Inspired by the Joyous Journal series written by Drs. Petra Weldes and Christian Sorensen, I invite you to join me as we delve into their wisdom together, exploring ways to make the seed of love within us blossom and bear fruit all the year through. Now, at the heart of love's seed is the divine presence of God that created each and every one of us out of a profound act of love, imbuing us with all its qualities and attributes. The power and presence of God is so vast, it is incomprehensible, 
yet so intimate that it is closer to us than our very breath. Our very first experience of falling in love should be with God. And we should do so with all our heart, mind, and soul. Loving God brings freedom from fear and shines a light of clarity on the truths that we must live by. When we have the energy of love going on and are in touch with its radiance, anything is possible. We blossom, we raise our vibration, we become more attractive, confident, and self-assured. Deep abiding love of God blossoms into an open-hearted embrace of life with laughter, enthusiasm, openness, and a positive regard for all people. Consider that every time your heart swells with joy, you are loving God. It doesn't matter whether it is with another human being or you're experiencing a blissful moment in nature or some sweet, sweet Sunday evening music, oldies music. Notice where you are whenever you feel this way and anchor that feeling in your heart. Now seek to be that same way in other situations and with other people. Love blossoms on the outside, but it must begin with blossoms on the inside. It is difficult to express love outwardly when we don't feel our own sense of self-worth. One of the biggest reasons we shut out love is because we feel unworthy. We must challenge any negative self-concept that creeps upon us, you know, that critical inner voice that tells us that we are not good enough. When we do this and take the loving actions that contradict that inner critic, we enhance our own sense of worth and are able to get closer to the people that we love. Now, every time that we look in the mirror, we need to know that what is reflecting back at us behind the extra pounds, the folds, and the gray hairs, oh, and the wrinkles, is a perfect child of a perfect God. Focus on those qualities that you love about yourself and love them up. Focus, too, on those aspects that you wish were different and love them up, too. They are a part of what makes each and every one of us unique. It makes us who we are. So while we are busy nurturing and caring for and loving others, and I think about my mom here, mommy would give away her last piece of planting because one of us felt that we wanted more than what we were shared. You know, mothers do that, don't. And so we must not forget to give ourselves the same gifts that we choose to give to others the pampering, the time alone, the sleep, and the good food. You ever taken yourself out for a meal in a restaurant, just you alone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it more often. You cannot give from an empty cup. You know, in the, in the airplane, they say, put on your mask first, so you need to nurture yourself. Loving yourself is another way to make the seed of love blossom through you. Let's say together, I take time to care for and nurture myself. Together, I take time to care for and nurture myself. It is, in it is in relationship, though, that love has a potential to thrive and blossom the most. Relationships provide a deep, profound way for us to grow spiritually, do you think? Hmm. It matters not if it's a lover, a child, a sibling, a parent, a friend, or a colleague. It doesn't matter. In relationship, we are confronted with all the ways that our past, our conditioning, and our subconscious patterns are still playing themselves out in our lives. In relationship, every rough edge you have is exposed. That's why some of us sort of stay away from relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. Every old belief you have is questioned. Every area of control or neglect is revealed and you get to see where you harbor resentment and judgment. Do you agree with that? In relationship, our, our shadow as well as our light um, is exposed. 
loving another person provides a wonderful opportunity to see God in them. Each person is a unique, precious radiant of God's light. When we see their light, we also help them to see that light in themselves. Loving another person is a powerful recognition of their value, worth, and their presence. Here's a, something that you can consider. How is your love a gift to the special people in your life? And what can you do to love them more openly and more deeply? So say with me, I'll say it once, I see the light of God's love reflected in the eyes of everyone. I see, together, I see the light of God's love reflected in the eyes of everyone. You know, as, a, as important as it is to love others, it is equally important to allow others to love you. The master teacher entreated us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Allowing yourself to be loved, allow spirit to refill your cup so you have more to give. It also reminds us that as children of God, there is nothing you need to do to earn anybody's love. Simply being yourself is enough. Do you believe that? We just have to be because we, we are perfect, whole, and complete just the way we are. Say with me, I let the gift of love flow freely into my open heart. Together, I let the gift of love flow freely into my open heart. Yes, and Reverend John says, and out again. So we just allow the divine circulation of love to keep flowing. Now, like the mango seed, I mean, before it became a strong, sturdy mango tree, it, it needed a little bit of care when it was perhaps a seedling. So love needs nurturing and space for the tree to blossom and flourish. Love requires attention and can't be fit into convenient moments like Valentine's Day. So we need to make room for love by creating spaciousness in your heart, setting aside resentment, grudges, and hurts. Make room for love by creating spaciousness in your calendar, setting aside quality time to spend with your loved ones. Make love by make 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 room for love <laughs> by that that too by. <laughs> by creating spaciousness, spaciousness in your mind, setting aside complaints, gripes, and criticism. And make, make room for love, or, or when we make room for love, we make room for spirit to permeate our relationships, bringing vitality, richness, and joy. This is so important now in our fast-paced world where we pay so much more attention to our, our devices than we do to the people that we love. Have you ever been to a restaurant and seen two people together and each one of them is on, a, on their phones? And maybe we are guilty of that ourselves? We need to watch that. So let's say together, I consciously and intentionally create space for love in my life. I consciously and intentionally create space for love in my life. Friends, here's where I'd like to speak a little bit about the F word. You know what I'm talking about, right? Now, while love is an amazingly important part of having a thriving and fruitful life, unforgiveness, anger, and judgment will close our heart and restrict life's blessings. They also become filters through which you see yourself, others, and every situation in your life. What could happen if you, made, if you became very intentional in loving and forgiving those you believe have hurt you? Make the effort then to forgive yourself for all those things you blame yourself for. And that sometimes the list can be very high, you know. A long, long list of a shouldas and a wouldas and a could have. And if I didn't, you know, we, we tend to go into the self-blame thing very, very deeply. We cannot be an avenue for love and be cynical and resentful at the same time. Forgiveness is the transformative power that will engage, uh, sorry, that will disengage a stubborn, righteous mind. It invites caring and understanding 
and is the gateway to the freedom of joyous living. So here's a forgiveness practice that you might want to consider, and it will go a long way in facilitate healing. Um, Petra Welders and Christian Sorensen suggest to, make a, to think about an area of your life, and you might want to do that right now. Think about an area of your life where you feel wronged or where you have experienced an internal conflict uh, or are experiencing such a conflict about forgiving someone. And I want you to list the logical reasons why you should not forgive them. That's a very interesting approach. List the logical reasons why you shouldn't forgive them. They did this, they did that, it, they made me feel this, and so on and so forth. And I want you to spend some time and look at that list. And to witness the list and honor each reason. But don't stay with it and play victim. And then I want you to make the illogical spiritual choice to bring inner peace into this situation and then having done that journal on how that experience has affected you how it has healed and freed you because sometimes when we write down the reasons and we look at them and you know we realize that they're not so so important after all and then we are, we, are, we are able to release their hold over us. And you can also practice the Hawaiian teaching of forgiveness, ho opono opono, which roughly translates to make things right. And it says very simply, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, Thank you. I love you. You know, it is said that love is more powerful than the waves of the ocean and the winds of the sky and can overcome any circumstance that life dishes out to us. Here's a story that demonstrates this. There were once two warring uh, tribes, one that lived on the lowlands and the other one that lived up in the mountains. The mountain people invaded the lowlanders one day, and as part of their plundering, they kidnapped the baby of one of the lowlander families taking the infant with them back up into the mountains. The lowlanders were distraught. They didn't know the mountain nor how to track the mountain people in the steep terrain. Nevertheless, they sent out their best party of fighting men to climb the mountain and bring the baby home. After several days of effort, however, they had climbed only a few hundred feet, feeling hopeless and helpless the lowlander men decided that the cause was lost and they prepared to return to the village without the baby. As they were packing their gear for the descent, they saw the baby's mother walking towards them. They realized that she was coming down the mountain that they hadn't figured out how to climb. And she had the baby strapped to her back. How could that be? One man greeted her and said, we couldn't climb the mountain. How did you do this when we, the strongest and most able men in the village, couldn't do it? She shrugged her shoulders and she said, hmm, it wasn't your baby. Such is the power of love. You've heard about people who will lift cars and ex demonstrate extraordinary strength in the face of a crisis just because they... Um, a loved one is, 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 is being hurt. It is that love that we believe will bring healing to the world at this time. There's a letter allegedly written by physicist Albert Einstein, and there have been other reports to refute that this wasn't so. It's a makeup business, but it's still a, you know, the letter that I read was really powerful. So I'm going to pull from it because the words are, are really worth sharing. And it says, this is back in 1902, it says, if we want our species to survive, if we are to find meaning in life, if we want to save the world and every, every sentient being that inhabits it, love is the one and only answer. Perhaps we are not yet ready to make a bomb of love, 
a device powerful enough to entirely destroy hate and selfishness and the greed that devastates the planet. However, each individual carries within them a small but powerful generator of love whose energy is waiting to be released. When we learn to give and receive this universal energy, said the letter, we will have affirmed that love conquers all, is able to transcend anything and everything because love is the quintessence of life. End of that alleged letter. But it's still powerful words, don't. So even if the letter was false, the writing is powerful, we agree. Love is indeed the greatest avenue of divine expression, you know. It can transmute pain into joy, scarcity into abundance, and sickness into health. It will take fear, worry, and anxiety and dissolve them all with infinite possibilities, blossoming into loving relationships and joyful encounters. Now this morning in my meditation, there is a, an article written by Ron, Reverend Ron Fox, and I'll just read a paragraph where he quotes Jack Cornfield, and he says, Jack Cornfield wrote about the healing power of love this way, and he, he, this is a quote. Perhaps this is the best thing we can do to help where, when we can to witness each other with kindness, to offer our presence, to show the trust we have in life. Spiritual life is not about knowing much, but about loving much. End of that quote. You know, you know, what the world needs now indeed is love, sweet, sweet love. And so what can we do here in Jamaica? I mean, we, it seems as if we are so distant from what is going on uh, between Russia and the Ukraine. But um, as we will hear, if sand can turn into a pearl, and if a worm can turn into a butterfly, then love can heal the world. So as we prepare to begin a new month and you know, wrap up this love month, I'm inviting you to do three things and to think about and act on during the next month. So this is your assignment. Should you decide to accept it. Did I get you right, Reverend John? Okay. First thing, there are three things and it's about one, making room for love. Two, um, growing love. And three, showing love. So making room, growing love, showing love. The first one, ask yourself, how can I make room for love in my life and in my relationships? In other words, you can't fill a glass that's already full. So you have, we have to drop something. We have to let go something. What leftover hurts and resentments, shame or guilt, do we need to let go of? First thing. Second thing, what spiritual practices must I embrace to nurture and grow love in my life? In other words, how do I water the seed of divine love that is, it's not going anywhere, it's there. How do we water it and allow it to blossom in our lives? And the third thing, what specific action, I want you to think now about your children, your spouses, your friends, your spiritual community, and the people that are important in your life, and ask yourself this question. What specific actions can I take to show love to others in my life? You know, it would be like the husband who, you know, will screw in a light bulb and his wife is upset because she's not telling him she loves him. Love is a doing word. We need to do things. We need to speak it. So what can we do to show love, to demonstrate the caring, the kindness, the compassion, the empathy, the understanding, the respect that is the, 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 the nurturing fuel that sustains life? What can we do to demonstrate that? Friends, I invite you to take the time to celebrate all the love blossoms in your life. Plant seeds today that will make um, love flourish throughout your lifetime and from which others will benefit. Celebrate your significant other, your family, your friends, your spiritual community, your career, your health, your prosperity. 
celebrate your willingness to be open to trust and to give up yourself. Let's say that together. I am willing to open to trust and to give up myself. Together. I am willing to open to trust and to give up myself. And celebrate the gift of love and life and how blessed and how loved we truly are. Namaste. And now we have a very, very special um, musical item. And Steve is joining us from Florida and joining with Carol on a beautiful song together. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. And no, this is not a solo. It is indeed Steve and I singing together, thanks to the power of technology.
You know, they said that necessity is the mother of invention. Look how far we've come since March of 2020 when this so-called pandemic hit us. And look how we have evolved. We're singing with Steve in Florida, having a duet with somebody in foreign. How wonderful. Thank you so much, Stevie, Stevie G. Thank you, Carol. And just thank the divine presence of creativity for, for making this all happen. Let's acknowledge them again. And now together we are going to sing our second and final hymn. Mm. <laughs> mm? Oh, the Caroline falling right back, back of you. <laughs> Let's do together our prayer of Jamaica and then we will sing our, we will do our final hymn. Prayer of Jamaica and it's on the flyer in your program. Together. The radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island, Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, help, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established and so it is. And now we'll sing our second hymn, which is Love Lifted Me, and it is on a flyer in your program, and the words will appear also on the screen if you're um, watching online. Searching all about, seeking for life and peace, thinking there were found without, still I, I could find no ease. But the Christ who dwells in me heard my despairing cry, said, Why seek the world of thee? For here am I. Love lifted me. strive love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me with Christ's eternal life love lifted me all my heart with love I give ever to truth I cling where God's blessed presence live ever sweet praise sing. Love so mighty and so true makes my soul fills the songs, giving love and service where my heart belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me from the thoughts of doubt and strife.
we know that love lifts, lifts us into that awesome space of fullest self-expression. And it is that space of self-expression and abundance that we take our loving gifts together and bless them. And say together on the program, on the envelope, <laughs> lovingly I give, joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone you touch. And replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father. And so it is. And we just bless the outpouring of abundance as we recognize that it comes from that infinite source of God's giving me, the infinite source of, of love, of allness that is at the center of our being, that is at the seed, that is the seed of our possibility, the seed of our love, the seed of all that is. And so we know that this seed now blossoms into a special blessing for this temple of life and for everyone who has chosen to give. We truly give thanks for the abundance that is ours by right of being and know that as we give, so shall we truly receive. I am deeply grateful to know that my word is acted upon by divine law and it is our fullest experience. I give thanks that it is so and so it is. And now let us say, let there, yes, there is love on earth together. the globe to touch move and lift up every single person who is open and receptive to this and knowing that the healing power of our love is that which creates cords of everlasting unity throughout the entire cosmos and so as we end this wonderful Sunday morning service let us just be reminded that our wonderful temple of light has awesome experiences together. And so join Reverend John next week, Sunday, for another wonderful encouragement for our healing service on Tuesday with Reverend Michael Record, with Reverend John on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for quiet moments in the garden, and on Thursdays for prayer power. We know truly that every one of these opportunities allow us to be lifted up, to fully experience Experience and express the divine presence. And so with gratitude, I release my word now on the, with a knowing that all is truly, truly well. I give thanks that this is so. And so, so it, it is. is. Each moment in love eternally. about 
Ash Wednesday. If you have prayer requests, please leave them in the basket or send them online. There's a basket with paper and pen right in the front that you can write your prayer requests for Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And if you can, be here from 6 a.m. till 3 p.m. <laughs>